banking too. Pew. Kept all his earnings in the bank in the shoe. Hey everybody, it's me, Brendan Kennedy. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, The BK Stank. This is the channel where we talk about powerlifting, beer, whatever happens to be on my mind, though most of the time it is either powerlifting, beer, or comedy, either stand-up or improv. I hope you guys like my new look, YouTube. Uh, I had to clean the beard up a little bit. Uh, I like growing it out a little bit, but there eventually hits a point where it's like, uh, like right now, kind of cleaned up. And I, I have to have the beard because my my lower lip kind of melts into my, my neck a little bit. So I have the beard here to tell the world where my face stops. But I like to grow it big and long, but after a while, it, I just kind of look crazy. I'm just another guy walking down the road going, how many times I got to go to the yeah, okay. Like there's a, for some reason like some people can grow their beards out and they look like badass Navy SEALs who are retired and I, I don't I just look like sad homeless guy it, it's not a good look for me like it 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 wasn't looking like as as full as I wanted it to and maybe I just I was trimming it up wrong and maybe I need a, a beard coach so I kind of cleaned it up but you can still tell where my face stops so that's good. Still haven't done another powerlifting video yet. Still waiting on my issues to, to heal up. Uh, I'll probably actually do another video about that in a second. The beer that I'm doing today is really exciting for me because I was reading the label and it talked about the first time you ever had a really hoppy beer and you almost spat it out because you thought it was so hoppy. In fact, on the can, uh, this is actually resin from the Six Point Brewery. It says, we remember our first sip of hoppy beer. Do you? Nearly spat that blank out. Now we fantasize about this stuff. Thinking about those hop cones bursting with juice, ripe as hell, makes you look forward to that first resin all day long. Can't wait. So a lot of times they write bullshit on the backs of cans and you just think to yourself like, okay, great, it's hoppy. But then this one, I actually, I don't know, maybe I'm sentimental, but I do remember those times. I feel like there are those beers that you have in your life and you had never had anything like that before and all of a sudden it just changes the game for you. For me, that first beer, that double IPA flavor that just walloped me in the face with hoppiness had to be uh, the Hercules double IPA from Great Divide Brewery. The... I even remember the first time I had it. This was back when I used to be really active in home brewing, and I had one shop that actually carried all the brewing ingredients, and they also sold a great variety of beer and wine. Uh, they don't sell it any. They don't sell the brewing ingredients anymore. But if you're in the Blacksburg area, the Vintage Cellar is an amazing store just to look around for beer and wine, and the knowledgeable staff is cool as shit. But I remember at the time I had ordered a bunch of brewing ingredients over the phone. And I talked to the guy, my friend, who worked there, and I said, hey, throw something in there that's really good, that'll, that'll surprise me. And he says, oh, I know just what to send you. So I opened the box, and I opened the brewing ingredients, and then I see this beer, this beer in there. And it actually happened to come on a cold day, so I just took it out of the box, ice cold. And I remember starting my brewing process, mashing my grain, and tasting this beer. And it was the first time that, like, it all started to make sense to me and it really blew my mind that you could have a beer a double IPA that had so much just over-the-top bitterness but also all that hop flavor and that it was executed so perfectly my hope is that this resin double IPA tastes half as good as the Hercules double IPA from Great Divide if it tastes half as good I'll be happy if it tastes better my fucking brain will explode also I love the name resin it just makes you think of hops that are just saturated with like sappy hoppy goo and it's dried and is just crusty girl you nasty just I, I i want a beer called resin to just make my entire room smell like hops so this is two or three feet away from me and it's already starting to smell hoppy oh that's beautiful <laughs> see this in the best way it almost smells like when you have a pot of beer boiling and you've just added the hops and everything smells like hops. There's some piney stuff, definitely kind of citrusy. 
Let's give it a taste. That's wonderful. It is very, very bitter, but somehow the, the flavors are all balanced enough where the hoppy flavor almost like coats your mouth. It's almost like all the hop oils that they were able to extract just rose to the top and just coat your, the entire surface of your mouth. This is really wonderful. Now underneath that, there's definitely a lot more, there's enough maltiness. I've had some uh, double IPAs that are about like 10% alcohol and they get to being 10% alcohol because they're just adding a shit ton of malt. This one, it's, it's balanced, but it's not exactly super malty for a double IPA. This is 9.1% alcohol, so this is not a beer that you're probably going to be able to drink four or five of. Well, you might be able to drink four or five of them, but you probably shouldn't. You'll just end up being really annoying to all the people around you. What's really interesting about this, it almost tastes like that they did add a lot of bittering hops to it at the beginning of the boil, but it also tastes like they just added a shit ton of hops uh, towards the end. So, yeah, while there's like a little bit of that hop aroma, it's not as like sappy and dry hopped as other double IPAs that I've had. It's definitely got a lot more hop flavor than a lot of other IPAs that I've had, or double IPAs. For being 9.1% alcohol and being as hoppy as it is, it's really fucking smooth. There are some double IPAs that I've had where it tastes like they're so hoppy they're going to strip the enamel off of your teeth and it's just unpleasant and it just burns your taste buds out. There are times where I had a, a, I had a work event where they provided this one pale ale and it wasn't even that hoppy but after you drink five or six of them it just you, you your tongue goes numb from all that that bitterness whereas this it's it's super bitter you taste all of that hop flavor but it's so fucking smooth see this is so smooth this is so well made that it's actually kind of dangerous because this does not have the epic, huge body that a lot of high gravity beers have. It doesn't taste thick. It doesn't feel syrupy. But this is 9.1% alcohol. There's no rocket fuel like sensation. It doesn't feel like this is rubbing alcohol at all. It just tastes smooth and easy to drink. And down it like it's nothing. 12 ounces is not enough for this. I want this to be available only in 24 ounce cans so you can drink it as fast as you want to instead of feeling like you have to tap the brakes every few seconds because it's so delicious. Or maybe this was available in 24 ounce cans and they figured out that that was too dangerous and everybody was just getting fucked up and just exploding stuff everywhere and the city almost burnt down into flames and then the fire marshal said, no, 12 ounces, that's all you can put in a can. The, the hop flavor is there, but it's not so abrasively bitter that you can't go back for another sip. This is really, they, they, they put a lot of effort into it. I feel like there were a few fuck up batches before they got this and it was perfect and they realized that this was the recipe to go with. See, a beer like this does bring back memories, so it doesn't necessarily remind me of the Her Great Divide Hercules Double IPA. It's, it's a close contender, but that that's still I think the the beer to, to judge other beers on. <clears throat> but it does remind me of back when I used to brew for. So when uh, I used to brew beer, it was like an eight hour process because you got to sit your water out. You got to, it takes forever to boil five gallons of water. Then you got to have your mash, which is another hour, hour and a half. And then you start draining the water off. That's another hour, hour and a half. Eventually you start the boil and finally it starts to bubble up. And then you know you only have an hour of boiling left to do. So I, by the end of it, you're always exhausted. So I always made sure I had a few beers while I was brewing. But the, the smell and flavor of this beer remind me so much of those days where finally the beer had cooled down and I could put it into my fermenter. And I would always have just like a little taste to see what the unfermented beer tastes like because it's interesting. There's, it hasn't been fermented yet. So there are still fermentable sugars dissolved in there. So it's sweet. But then 
there's something about the hop flavor of unfermented beer where it's completely different and it's almost it's usually it's usually not good but it's some it's like somehow this beer embodies all those flavors of just freshly boiled beer but it's still drinkable this is this is really good sometimes i miss brewing uh there is something magical about walking into a store buying up a certain allotment of malted barley unmalted barley roasted barley whatever hops you wanted and then maybe even figuring out whichever non-typical beer ingredients you're going to add maybe you're going to add spices to it some people add um candy sugar to their belgian style ales and so there's that that i don't know there's something like really magical about picking out all the ingredients and knowing that about a month and a half later you're going to have beer uh, eventually it got to the point though where you know like I said, it's an eight hour start to finish process. You need to have room for the fermenters. You need to do a lot of cleaning because you're going to spill stuff and then you need to clean all your brewing equipment. And as much as I love brewing beer, it's, I just don't have the time for it. I think of one day I'd like to pick it back up again, but I'm probably not going to be brewing any beer right now. So for now, I think this beer is about as close as I'll get to home brewing. And I really, really admire the work that they've done with this. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, please subscribe. If you didn't like it, go ahead and tell me what you didn't like in the section down below. If you did like it, go ahead and comment too. That's it for now. My name is Brendan Kennedy. I'll see you next time.